Okay, let's build a little uh, Ajax application using jQuery. So here I have a very simple page. Uh, it doesn't do anything right now. Let's look at the source code here. So this is well, this is the source code for that page. You see, I'm loading my jQuery right here. Then I am loading this script.js, which right now has nothing. And then I am printing out the title and I have this little comment field and the button uh, it doesn't do anything right it's not a button it's a paragraph right now so and uh, here is my uh, main page handler and uh, you see all I'm setting I'm setting the title and I am displaying it I have a get and a post on slash uh, and uh, the post uh, just says got it doesn't do anything right now so what I want to do is I want to be able to click on this. Right? If I click on it, you know the user can type in a comment. I click on it, and we send that comment back to the server using an XHR request. So uh, an XHR request, spelled like XHR, right, is the XML HTTP request, right? Which uh, you'll see it's just a get. Or a post or a put or a delete uh, with an extra header. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm uh, I'm right here. First, let's do the button part. So I want when the user clicks on the button, I want to do my uh, my send my message. So I'm going to need to enable that. So document dot ready function. And uh, I'm gonna say no dollar sign. When the user clicks on what was it? Uh, my button, my button. And uh, when the user clicks on it, I wanna you know I'll call handle click. So and then I'm gonna need to implement my function handle click. And uh, let's just say, just make sure this works. Click, right? So I go right here. I reload the page. I gotta go to the console. I click here, and it says click. Okay, that's working. So back. Now what I want to do here is I want to send an AJAX request with whatever the user typed in. Uh, first of all, the, what the user typed in is gonna be here on the comment. All right, so I'm gonna call that the text bar text equals. I'm gonna grab that hash comment and uh, dot val is what you use to get the value of whatever the user typed in. I can move that here. Console log. Text. Right, so we can see that. Reload. Hello. Click. User type hello. Okay, that's working. Now to actually send it, we're gonna use the dot ajax, right? and this is all very well documented in, of course, the jQuery documentation. If you go here, you click on ajax on the jQuery docs. It'll take you here, and uh, so when you see this jQuery dot ajax jQuery is the dollar sign. Just replace that with a dollar sign, or you can write the full jQuery. So this is the main one. There's shortcuts down here uh, you can use, but I'm just going to use the main one. Um, and uh, you see it says jQuery Ajax takes a URL and then some setting. And then the settings are right here. The settings is a set of key value pairs that can see configure the request. So this is very common. The settings is, is a JSON object, and uh, you see this in jQuery. Does this a lot? A lot of libraries do that a lot. The second argument is, or sometimes the first argument to a method, is a JSON object. So let's see how that works. So the first one is the URL that we want to send our AJAX request to. So remember, our AJAX request is just going to be a get or a put or a delete or or um, update. Uh, so we're gonna need a JSON object here, like that, 
and we're gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna do go to the slash. I'm gonna go and go to the slash, and my uh, my method is posed in the way jQuery uses the key of type. So I have to say type is either posed or get or put or delete. So I'm gonna say type is posed. Posed and uh, remember this is a comma right right now we're within a JSON object so key value comma key you know colon value key colon value comma key colon. Um, and then the uh, the data I want to send is use data if I remember correctly so you go up here you check uh, data it's the data to be sent to the server okay so in there I'm gonna put you know the text thing. So remember I said text to be whatever the user typed in. So right there that is gonna make a post. So when the user clicks, we're gonna make a post to slash sending text. Let's make sure that works. Go over here, I read all the page, I, does it work? And now I'm gonna go over here to the network tab so we can see if something gets sent. You see, this is what we just did, localhost, jQuery, and script. I'm gonna click add it. And the moment I click adding, you see this other thing shows up. It says that there's been a post to localhost slash. You can click on that and we can see post localhost slash. And uh, you can see down here, this one has this X requested with XML HTTP request. So that's, that's the only difference between an XHR request and a regular post request is this header. Uh, well, you know, it's also different how the browser handles it, of course. And you can see here the form data is uh, does it work? Question mark. And uh, you see this is uh, so it's actually the key, right? And if you remember, the form data is on the forms of key value pairs. Um, so the key is the what I sent it. So really, what we would generally want to do is not send just the text like that. But send it, you know, another JSON object here, and uh, we can say the text is text. Okay, this is confusing, but the first text is literal. The second text corresponds to this variable here. I hope. Let's see. I'm gonna reload that. I'm gonna click oh, again, add it, and there we go. And I'll take a look at it and uh, form data text and the value again. So we're good. We're sending data to the server. Whenever the user clicks on this, we send that data to the server, and uh, we can verify that indeed, you know, the post is happening. So the server is getting that data. And uh, of course, right now, if you look at our server code, um, the server code for the post just says "got it," right? And we can verify. Let's verify that the response was "got it." So the server got it. Uh, but it's not doing anything with it. So let's just go back to the server and change it so that it'll start in the database. So I'm going to add a comment uh, db.model class, right? This is a database table uh, with a text attribute uh, db.string class, string property. So there you go. I'm gonna create a comment that, and so now what I want to do here is I want to write what the user sent in this like chart request, and so I'm gonna say comment C O M for comment is uh, the new comment. So I'm gonna create a new comment with a text equal to self dot request dot get, and uh, it was text, right? Let's go back here. So headers, so the key is text and the value is going to be what I want. So the key is going to be text. So I'm getting the text value of it and I'm assigning that to the text. And there you go. And now I'll just save that to the database, com.put, and it's going to be saved to the database, hopefully. So I'm just going to reload this again. And will it save this? Edit. So I got there and um, you know we got the uh, the response right it says okay got it and uh, how do we check 
well, we can go over here to the data store viewer and see oh, there's a comment there, list entries, uh, will it save this? And indeed it did, right? So there is one entry, one comment with the right tag. So it did save things to uh, our database. Uh, let's try again. Uh, second test. Add it over here, list entries, and there we go. So it is adding things to the database. Um, awesome. And uh, but so generally, we want to fetch things from the database, right? We don't just want to write stuff. We want to get stuff back. So let's go over here and uh, let's see how if we want to get something back from the server. How do we do that? Well. We add another thing here in to our Ajax. Uh, we add the success function, handle response. Right? So there's another one called the success. In, in the Ajax, you have the type, which is post, the data I'm sending, and the success is going to be the function that gets called when this returns with 200. You know, OK. Um, again, this is all documented over here. Success is right. Success and uh, data, and then the, uh, the the function itself will take up to three arguments. The data, the first one is the data the server returns. So let me let me just look at that. Just uh, write that function now. So function handle response data, right? And I'm gonna ignore the other three two arguments for now. And uh, I'm just going to write this out, console.log got from server data. So it's just going to print out whatever data I got from the server on the console. And that's going to be on success. OK, so let's see if this works. We go by here. We go third. I'm going to go over to the console here. Third, and then I'm going to click here and add it. And it says user type third added. No, it did not work. Uh, I gotta reload the page. Let me see. Third added. There you go. Got from server. Got it. And so uh, fourth. I'm gonna click add it and uh, user type fourth and then got from server. Got it. So it does work. Uh, we can. Uh, you know, when the server returns, this function gets called with the data, which is got it from the server. Um, but in a you know real application, the data will be uh, you know different, right? So you'll probably be asking the server for something and adding it. Uh, and one last thing is uh, notice that you know right now I'm adding these things to the server, but the, the user right here, you know, he just he doesn't see that he just. He doesn't actually see anything because he doesn't have the console, right? So he clicks that and nothing appears. What you would want is, let's like, say, to these things to appear down there as the user types them in, and we can do that. We can go over here to Eclipse uh, and uh, to our script. And what we want to do is right after the user clicks something, I'm going to go to my, my base.html. And uh, I'm going to add an OL uh, output uh, with an ID of output, right? So I'm adding this empty OL down there. Then I'm going to go back to my script here and uh, I'm going to grab that uh, output. Oops, I forgot my quotes. Dot append and uh, I'm gonna append an li with the text. Doing that wrong. All right. So when the user clicks on it, I'm gonna append whatever the user typed in to the output. And let's see if that works. So I type this. I type this. Click here and add it, and there's the I added that. Uh, another, and I then. So notice that all this is happening, right? I type in something, 
and uh, immediately if you look at the, the code immediately after I type in this gets handled and I am appending that to the page right uh, so the page, this is really fast it's hard to tell here because it's such a small page but there is no page being reloaded here right the moment I click here and add it this gets added over here there's no page reload at all and uh, the user gets immediate feedback as to you know what the something has happened now, the tricky part of course is that uh, we don't know that really something happened what did happen uh, is that you know we sent this post to the server but we don't actually know if the server got uh, or if that is going to work right because our success function has not been called it could be that there was an error right there is also an error one here you can have add another function to handle errors so this is one of the tricky parts you know you want to be able to update the user interface really quickly because that makes for a very snappy application uh, but you also have to remember that if you do that uh, things could go wrong and the post could fail and then you have to backtrack which is a little more complicated I'm not going to show that uh, but for example if you use Gmail Gmail does that every now and then you hit send it looks like it's sent it right away but then maybe after a second or two you'll get an error message that says oh no I couldn't send it so uh, you might have to you have to do that when you're writing a, a full application.